Good evening, YouTube. How are you? I'm sitting here enjoying the sound of the peepers singing in the night outside of my place. <laughs> you guys know how loud they can be. Well, they're medium loud right now. They're not as loud as they could usually get, but given a couple of hours, they're going to be really loud. So I wanted to do a react before they really get started. So I have been keeping an eye on Chantal today. She did a mukbang and I looked at it and I decided, you know, I really don't want to react to that because there's really nothing to talk about. She just ate a bunch of food and talked about nothing. So in my opinion, really nothing worthy to react to. And she did a live and she talked about some things and I thought, well, okay, I'll react to that. So we're going to react to her live, which was called Bring Me to Life. Interesting title. She got that title from an Evanescent song of the same name. Uh, she talked about Salah. She talked about the reaction channels. She talked about herself. So wanted to go over it as well as a lot of cool stuff that I found on Twitter relating to Chantal. Before we begin, though, I would like to say a few words, if I may. So let's talk about standing on your business. Let's start with YouTube. YouTube, in my opinion, is not standing on its business because a while ago they made policies saying that you could not glorify problems with food. And yet that's what Chantal continues to do, glorify and monetize her issues with food. So they have these policies in place and yet they are not reinforcing them as they should. And I guess that's their right because they are a company and if they make the rules, they can also bend the rules and look the other way and turn the cheek if they want to. But what's the sense in having rules if you don't make people follow them? So really strange of you, YouTube, that you're not standing on your business. I think it's weird, YouTube, that if reactors even talk about the things relating to Chantal, we have to use code words a lot. Uh, to replace other words. And sometimes that gets a bit awkward. You know, finding code words that are okay with YouTube versus the ones that are not. So people are reacting to Chantal that aren't doing any kind of offensive behavior. We have to use code words. But yet, someone like Chantal actually doing the behavior, that's fine. They'll monetize her content. Also, let's talk about some of her beezers who, in my opinion, a lot of them are not standing on their business either. And what I mean by that is those in Chantal's chat that claim that they care about Chantal and they like Chantal. How can you claim to care about someone at the same time that you know full well about their issue with food? And yet, when you go into her chat, you talk about the source of her problem with her. And by doing so, you might be triggering her or encouraging her to eat. I don't know about you guys, but if I knew someone or I like someone and they had a problem with something, especially if the problem was ongoing, I wouldn't be encouraging them by action or by word to do the source of their problem. Even if they brought it up in conversation, I would turn the conversation away to something else or say to that person, you know, I really don't think we should be talking about this. But yet when I watch Chantal and her Beezers, there's a lot of people in her chat. They talk about food with her. They bring up food, which makes her think of food and talk about food, which leads to her eating of food. So those of you that are your Beezers, understand this. The people that react to Chantal, we stand on our business. We maintain the same position and we do not move. We don't encourage Chantal to eat. We don't encourage the source of her addiction or continuing her addiction. Many of us speak out against it and some of us even encourage her to go get help. We say all the time, you should go to therapy. You should talk to people. You should go to inpatient. Certainly those of you on my channel, you've heard me say it and when I do say it, it's not out of any kind of phony sincerity. 
I actually do mean it. I think Chantal should go to therapy or check herself in the inpatient or be committed because honestly, at this point, she's a danger to herself. Something needs to be done. And obviously she's not going to do it, but I stand on my business and the other reactors, they stand on their business. We protest against what she's doing. When she gives nonsense behavior, we speak out on it and we don't change how we feel. But those of you that are Beezers, well, you say one thing and some of you just do another. You say you care about somebody and yet you prove by talking about the source of her problem with her that you don't care that much. Or perhaps you're just not thinking that food is not on the same level as, say, something like alcohol. And trust me, it is. Anything that's an addiction or an obsession can harm one's health. And certainly, anybody watching Chantal can tell that food has certainly harmed her health. So if you are someone that you're a beezer, you should stand on your business. You should stand and Stay very still and don't move, even if Chantal tries to make you move. If she tries to move to the left or to the right, just stand perfectly still. And don't let her sway you to either side. And maybe if enough of you in the chat, if enough of you say, let's not talk about food, Chantal. Let's talk about something else. Maybe it won't trigger her so much. Maybe she won't think about food so much. Maybe she'll get the hint that her hug box is not the place to indulge in her obsessions and her addictions. I don't know, just a thought. So that's the importance of standing on your business. Anyway, enough with that. I'm getting off my soapbox. Let's get into this stuff on Twitter. All right, so let me just pull up my Twitter because there's a lot of stuff that I've been saving today uh, during her mukbang because I really didn't want to react to it. it. It was just basically her having a B moment. And who needs to see any of that? So let's go on to Twitter and pull up all the little tidbits from different people, as well as the fun stuff. So here we have nature is amazing. Now this is cool. <laughs> You've got the stingrays just riding the waves. Surfing. <laughs> There they go. Uh, makes me miss Florida so much. Okay, here's something else that's cool from Nature is Amazing. This is sand surfing. This looks like a whole lot of fun going down the dunes, but what about the going back up part? I don't know. It still looks like something I'd like to try. It looks like a lot of fun. Okay, DX who's on Twitter, likes to give the verbal recaps of her lives and of her videos. And DX has a brief recap of what happened in the live. So DX says, the Chantal says that even though Salah was caught cheating and it hurt, there are levels that make certain stuff worse. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Cheating is cheating and all cheaters suck. Even a little bit of cheating is too much. It's unacceptable. But Chantal is so desperate that she is trying to justify being with Sala as, oh, it's not that bad. Trust me, it is that bad. <laughs> something happened in Thailand. You saw something on the TV or his phone and you freaked out about it. Uh, you saw something else on his phone before and you didn't do anything then. Now the whole Kai Bella thing. I mean, what does he have to do to get you to let go, Chantal? <laughs> uh, Chantal also says to get me my shovel at the thought of Salah physically cheating. You know, Chantal, this may be mean to say, but as far as the shovel comment, considering the way that you're treating your body, and the fact that you are just going ham with the food. If there's anything that's going to cause a shovel to come into your life, that would be it. Like you're, you're saying that Salah cheating would be the death of you. But ma'am, you're hurting your health. 
every day with every meal you are. So you don't really have much high regard for your health or your life. That's pretty evident by the way you get on camera and do the mukbangs, which in my opinion, you have no business doing. Now, this is a really cool story, courtesy of Julie Jeffries and Dog Lovers, a story about a heroic dog. So this person says, Ham saved my life yesterday. He hurt his paw, but I'm alive because of his bravery. Thank you, Ham. You are my best friend. I was working on my house where I fell and I was critically injured. He ran to me and started howling and crying. He tried to drag me and ripped his foot. Oh, poor baby. Uh, ripped his foot open. Luckily, he got my neighbor's attention. I should be unalive, but he saved me. Dogs are family. Uh, credit to Reddit uh, Shotgun Octopus. What a good boy. <laughs> what is? Look at that face. How could you not love that face? He's a good boy. He's a very good boy. You know, animals are more than just our pets. They, they, they are loved companions. But good on you, Ham. You saved your pet parent. Uh, this is from Why You Should Have a Cat. So we have a cat that's being all lovey-dovey with rhinos. Never thought I would see that. A rhino being best friends with a cat. But <laughs> even rhinos love cats, I guess. Okay, Perfectly Imperfect says, I know many blame Shmi, but I really feel bad for her mom. Imagine having a daughter who is basically unaliving herself and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Uh, DX, with the recaps, uh, Chantal said in the live, says her mother offered to buy her a new wardrobe if she'll come to stay for the summer. What? That sounds like Chantal making up stories again. Uh, choking on her food says she keeps choking while eating. Well, then take smaller bites, Chantal. Stop stuffing your mouth so full you can't swallow. And we start talking about eating her childhood foods. Ugh. Again? <laughs> Always the stories with the food. But going back to her mother, Shmi. You know, sometimes a child is a troubled child. And that child could be troubled despite having good parenting or discipline or structure. But with everything that we know about Chantal, it's, it's pretty clear that there wasn't a whole lot of structure or discipline in her house. She even said herself she's a spoiled brat. So she was coddled rather than disciplined. And it shows. It absolutely shows. So... The family failed Chantal because she didn't get the discipline that she needed and the structure that she needed because look what she turned into. Okay, this is from Queen of WTF. This is Chantal's thumbnail for the triple cheeseburger in Volcano Fries mukbang. So you guys can see right here why I did not react to this. I mean, look at the thumbnail. She sat on camera for 13 minutes. She ate a triple cheeseburger and volcano fries, which I don't know why they call them volcano fries because they look like crap. <laughs> what makes them volcano fries? They had a bunch of stuff on them and they looked dried out. But yeah, she just ate a cheeseburger at light speed, ate some crappy looking fries. But the thumbnail, can we talk about the thumbnail for a minute? She put on the thumbnail, no motivation whatsoever. Like in big, bold letters to get people's attention. Was that for pity? Was that for sympathy? Was that for attention? If I had no motivation, I wouldn't be announcing it to the world proudly. But it seems like Chantal is almost proud of the fact that she has no motivation, even though She's got plenty of motivation. I mean, she's got her YouTube channel. She's got her audience. She's making a little bit of money. Uh, she could turn things around if she wanted to. I mean, she's got different things to work with. But she's announcing to the world, I have no motivation whatsoever. You know, Chantal, there is some text missing 
from your thumbnail. Let me add to it. The no motivation whatsoever beneath that, you should have added, and no interest to get any either. There, I fixed it for you. So moving on to the recap from DX. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I've already read that. Uh, DX says uh, she re-explains that she didn't upload because she just hasn't been feeling like doing anything. Well, that's a normal for Chantal. She never feels like doing anything. She has no energy. She has no motivation. She has no focus. She has nothing. She motivated herself just enough to get to 100K. But then after the 100K, what's next? There wasn't a goal after that. So she did what she needed to do to get to that magic number. And then it's just like, okay, I'm done. No motivation for anything else. Uh, talking about her mom and food. Uh, she also said that she wanted a day to herself to not be on camera. Says she is definitely going to have more days like that. Well, isn't that the story of her life? Talking about movies. Let's see. She says she has a message for those who are against her. And basically, a F you, don't watch me, I don't care again. <laughs> isn't that, but isn't that her constant attitude? I don't care if you watch me, but yet I care. So I'm going to cause some drama. I'm going to talk about some stuff. <laughs> stand on business, Chantal. Make up your mind. You know, stand on your business. Uh, talking about drama on reaction channels. So deep in lore, I can't even understand. Well, that's Chantal trying to whistle in different people and communities that have nothing to do with her content. That's that's how lacking in content she is. Okay, and that's all from DX. Thank you, DX. Uh, this is from Perfectly Imperfect and DX. Uh, Chantal admits that she buys separate grocery hauls. She hides from the camera. We knew that, though. Told y'all. I told you, told you the girl was over there doing like the, the junk calls. And for some reason, she just wasn't showing them to us. Uh, the last junk call she did included soda, massive amounts of cheese, chips, hot Cheetos, candies, and French dressing. That's an interesting list. <laughs> Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, DX also says she cooked the entire day yesterday, making several dishes to the point Salah asked, you're cooking again? So I'm going to take a guess right now why she was cooking so much. Was it because it was the day before payday and she hadn't gotten her paycheck yet? So she couldn't buy the takeout and the junk food. So she was cooking massive amounts of food in the house to supplement in between the takeout. It kind of sounds like it does. Like if she can't get massive amounts of takeout, if there's food in the house, she's got to cook it because of her fixation on food. I I'm kind of getting that vibe. All right, going back a little bit. But yeah, she did her little junk food haul. Uh, Jolie says, nobody can save you with the path you're going down. Uh, your sugar levels are at blank level. You can't move without being winded. You are recently bed bound. You can't feel your limbs. You need a reality check. Yep. And she continues to do mukbangs. Uh, DX says, she asked what time it is and says she should order food, even though she already ordered food earlier. Yeah, she did that massive mukbang. I'm telling you. Like the, the the fixation she has on food is insane. Like I remember back in the villa days, this woman, it was a common occurrence for her to order food, get the food, have a massive meal, have a massive haul of food in front of her. And while she's eating that food, get on the phone and start ordering more food. Like she wouldn't even finish the first meal before she's thinking about and ordering the second. And this would go on for hours. Like her problem is really, really bad. 
Uh, Chantal flashes the keyboard, says Salah wanted to play for her 100K, says it makes her sad. I, I don't know what that means. I guess we'll see it in the live. Uh, Chantal is fake laughing at ridiculous comments. It's clear she's not laughing, but is pretending to because she's pressed. She's being really vile again, impersonating people and pretending to be unbothered, rat face, etc. Well, maybe it's one of those fake it till you make it things. Or maybe Chantal, she's the butt of a lot of jokes right now because she made herself that way. But she's trying to act like she's in on the joke. At the same time, she is the joke. Like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to be part of the crowd by acting like I'm in on it when I'm really not. Okay, something cool from Massimo. Newborn baby, uh, baby beavers can swim within 24 hours, yet some mothers don't want babies to swim. Maybe that's because of predators. And the mama beavers are like, well, I don't want you in the water and getting eaten. I just had you. <laughs> uh, yup, yup. Says, I love when Foodie spills her own tea. During her la latest live, when talking about one of her critics, she had this to say. Quote, she talks about Salah not working, but her husband doesn't have a job either. So your husband doesn't work, foodie? Well, we all kind of knew that, didn't we? We knew that Salah wasn't working. I mean, how could he? If Chantal wants to go out and do a vlog or, or she needs food at ridiculous hours, he's got to get up and go get it. How can you keep a job with being obligated to her like that? So... Thanks for the confirmation, Foodie. It's not really a surprise, but thanks for confirming it for us. Aw. Why you should have a cat. Adopt, don't shop. Look at this poor baby. Let him in. <laughs> Look at those big sad eyes. I can't. I'd let him in. Okay, what else we got here? What else we got? Okay, so here are some screenshots from the triple cheeseburger volcano volcano fries uh, vlog of sorts the mukbang now you guys can see why i didn't react to it i mean just why you can tell just by these pictures alone who she's doing the video for who she's catering to i talked about it in the video i posted before this one i went into detail about a certain fetish and the different subfolders to the main folder that's who she's making this content for that's who she wants to attract to her channel she's not interested in ordinary people with ordinary people money she wants the fetish guys with the fetish money and yet she's not getting a whole lot of them but i'm sure she does have some but that's who she's catering to She's catering to her obsessions and her addictions, but she's also looking for people that will pay money to watch this on YouTube, maybe elsewhere, maybe pay for separate content. That's who she's really targeting. Nobody else. Uh, Self-Care Canvas posted this saying, you cannot heal in the same environment where you got sick. Pay attention, Chantal. Pay attention to that. You cannot heal in the same environment where you get sick or around people that enable your sickness. You see how that works? You know, you're in Kuwait and you're enabling yourself too much and then you go online looking for enablers and funders and, and encouragers. That's why you're not getting well. You're not around people who will tell you no and set you straight. Nature is amazing. There's another world underneath the water. That is so stunning. That is incredibly stunning. Bees drinking at a bird bath in slow motion. Yeah, it's getting to be about that time of year, folks. Summertime. And bees are very important to us. They, they pollinate. Uh, without the bees, we'd be in trouble. So if you're someone, you have a yard or a porch or... You can set up a bird bath. You might want to set one up for the for the birds and the bees. They would get a nice cool drink because they are important to the world. 
See, even bees like to take a nice cool drink. So help them out this summer. It's going to get hot. What else we got here? Okay, so this is, this is from, is it Acadia Strong? The same reason she has said this. A uh, clip from FB Kitty One. So credit to them. Let's watch. Buy a hijab? I don't know how to wear them. I need a Isha to help me. What's with the two pixels? I know. I want a hijab to cover my head and my chin. So her wearing a hijab has nothing to do with being a Muslim woman. She just wanted something to cover her head and cover her chins. She said so. She just said so. So that's why you're wearing the hijab, booty. Has nothing to do with the faith. Has everything to do with you trying to cover yourself physically. And here's this clip, which will never go away, Chantal. Never. Uh, from Holly Go Heavy. The birth of the cosplay. Uh, Clotho98 says, the real reason Chantal wears a hijab. Let's watch. Do you like my head wrap? Sure. I'm probably going to start wearing hijabs. Okay. I know. I wish I had Bisto. Why? There's potatoes. Yeah. Bisto? No, why hijabs? Because they cover you pretty well. Bang. So the clothing part, it's all about covering herself. And she's not doing it for modesty. Chantal is not a modest person. She's far too feral. She just wants something to cover herself because she's not comfortable with her appearance. Like I like having my head covered if I don't have my wigs on. I don't know. And a hijab is like not a full body thing. Well, I know that. I know that it's just a head scare. You think I should only wear it if I'm Islamic? Probably. Okay, I'm Islamic. <laughs> you see how she said that so casually? Okay, I okay, I guess I'm Islamic. I guess I'll be a Muslim. The way she said that so casually, <laughs> Chantal, faith is not something you do casually, like just like on a spur of the moment, on a whim. <laughs> it's not like having the urge to get married. And so you go to Vegas and you get quickly married to somebody you didn't know just on a whim. This is something you got to take to heart. But just the way she said that, <laughs> I guess I'm Islamic. Wow. Wow. And, and that's why she acts the way that she does even now. Even in Kuwait, even being around Salah, she has a chance to change. She's not changing. That's why all of us who are reactors, we have called her out for her cosplaying because we don't see her as someone that she's taking the faith into her heart and really making some significant changes. That she is, she's just faking the funk. And she's been faking the funk and she makes up her own rules and she's being very disrespectful. She's not even doing haram things in private. She's doing them in public. So yeah, there's that cavalier attitude about putting on the hijab and putting on the abaya. There you have it. Okay, so I guess we're all caught up to everything on Twitter. So let's go on over to the live. Okay. You guys can hear the peepers, can't you? <laughs> oh, they're, they're getting loud now. They're getting real loud. All right. So if Chantal gets too boring or she starts to sing, we are going to fast forward or I will just mute her when she starts singing. Because I don't know what it is with her these days that she's turning her lives into some kind of karaoke, some demented karaoke. But I ain't having it. <laughs> I'm not having it. No. <laughs> No singing. Okay, let's go, let's go. Yeah, I missed you guys. I haven't been feeling like I hate hated social media for the last few days. Hi, Billy. 
is 0006 right now. Hey, Paul Freed, what movie? That triple burger looked good. Every time. No, it didn't. It did not look good. And the volcano fries did not look good either. And even if they were the tastiest thing in the world, that's food you shouldn't be eating anyway. But you already know that. Life is boring. You don't go live. <laughs> you know. Yeah, the guy sucked. Hi, Shelby. Your hubby makes butter for Land of Lakes? No way. That's a cool job. Hey, Paul. Your husband's a professional butter churner. I, I don't know what's been happening on social media. I'm just tired of it. You ever just get tired of everything you see on social media? Green Graves, yeah, probably Melly. No, I didn't go out for Iftar. <laughs> Can you show us the makeup products? Sure, Kiki. I use the same ones for years now. So I only have to show you once and you'll, you know. <laughs> makeup in the, okay. This is crackhead behavior. No, this is, you know, you're fasting all day. And I just, I feel. Ma'am, you posted a mukbang earlier. So unless you have mukbangs just backlogged that you've done, you ate a big meal earlier. And you're going to eat again on this live. <laughs> so you weren't fasting earlier. Well, like people think I'm like dead to like just dead already, you know? So I have to put makeup to show you how much difference a little bit, even just mascara, just watch. Okay. <laughs> I'm Canadian. Can I see something about the makeup situation, Chantal? It doesn't matter if you put makeup on ma'am. When a person is unhealthy, they are unhealthy. And makeup and filters and the hijab and the abaya, they cannot and will not hide that past a certain point. So you can put on all the makeup you want. You're still going to look unhealthy. You understand? So thinking that makeup's going to hide that? No. Yeah. Your butterball was cute. Dank fondue. Oh my gosh. I think we all know. No, we're not sleeping all day. Sleeping in between prayers sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Are you following Nell's trip to cut? No, I don't know why people watch them. I don't get it. She says the most disgusting things I've, I ever heard. Um, okay, so Chantal is talking about somebody that I don't know a whole lot about. I've seen things courtesy of the channel, The House of Hannibal, because The House of Hannibal, he covers Naked and Laughing, which is the name of the creator, and King Cobra, and the whole situation going on with Naked and Laughing and King Cobra there's a lot of stuff that Hannibal knows that I don't know, but uh, Naked and Laughing is she is a train wreck. And now she's with uh, King Cobra and they're train wrecks together. So that's kicking off. And it sounds like Chantal is a bit jealous of people talking about NAL and Cobra, Cobes, uh, because it sounds like there's somebody, meaning, uh, NAL who might be taking a crown you know like there, there's drama over there there's some toxic spicy stuff going on over there and people are getting interested and she there's nothing going on with her so you know if Chantal if you want to keep that crown you got to kick it up a notch because this boring nonsense is not doing it hey Jenna I, I saw a snippet of like I think Jessica messed this stream because like. You know, speaking of toxicity, that is how Chantal got the crown from Amberlynn Reed. You know, once upon a time, her and Amber were both neck and neck with the reactors going back and forth between them and covering them. And then Amber got way too boring and Chantal decided to just go wild with doing the chemicals on camera and doing the edibles and the eating and the whole situation with Natter. I mean, she was just going nuts. And so all of the attention shifted 
to her for that reason. That's how she got the crown. She snatched it off of Amber's head and said, I'm not giving it back. But if you're not doing anything, Chantal, if you're not interesting, that opens up the door for somebody else to get the crown. And it sounds like there's stuff going on with Naked and Laughing and, and Cobes that people are very, very interested in because there's nothing interesting going on with you. She like streams all their streams or whatever. I'm like, what's the big deal? People are talking about this now, now, now. Like, who the hell is this? What's going on? So I go and check and I tune in to. <laughs> Sounds like she's worried, doesn't it? Who is this person? Why are they getting attention? Why isn't the attention on me? <laughs> Look, I don't support NAL. I, I, I've watched a few minutes of her and I'm like, she's a lot. She's definitely a lot. But uh, it sounds like Chantal's worried. She's sweating. She is sweating. Here's this other person getting all this attention and all this press and their, their names are on people's lips. And, and she's like, why are they talking about me? Well, because there's nothing to discuss about you. That's why. There's no interesting tea anymore. Her, like, saying that she wishes somebody she doesn't like would be great by their father. What? Yeah. So, I'm Like I said, I don't know a whole lot about NAL, so I haven't heard this. I don't know what's going on. I'm not jumping in that pond. But obviously Chantal's interested. She's very interested to see who's getting attention besides her. I'm like, I'm tuning out. Bye. That's enough internet for today. <laughs> so no, I, I don't keep up with that crap. Unless I want to be in a bad, icky mood. Okay, guys. I have to remind you once again. This lovely makeup bag my sister gave me. Anything my sister gives me, I love. Because, you know. You know. mean the sister you bullied growing up? That one? My sis. I'm not going to put foundation. Because I have a filter. I don't need it. Hey, Siam. Going to Umrah. Inshallah, yes. Hello, Chin E. Pondu. Yoga. Yeah. I just, I saw that and I was like, wow. Like, she was running off the mouth. I don't know. I don't. I don't pay attention to that side of the internet anymore. Thank you. My heart hurt for you. My sister, you seem to struggle. Chantal talks backwards. Whenever she says, I don't pay attention to what's going on on the internet. It, it's opposite day with Chantal. She, me she says the opposite of what she means. So, Miss, I'm not paying attention means I am paying attention. And I'm wondering why this person over here is getting more attention than me. Well, if you had to watch your own content for hours, Chantal, you get it. Watch. A Muslim woman sister. Mm, maybe. I don't know. I struggle with social being social as well, honestly, unless it's online. But I do struggle mentally a lot. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Just watch. Just watch. But talking to you guys honestly makes me in a better mood. There's nothing wrong with that. You guys are real humans. What are you going to sing for karaoke? Sing Change in the House of Flies. No, don't sing that. Let's, let's just not sing that and just say we did and call it a day. Let's just pretend. Can we play pretend? Let's just pretend we sang a song and not sing at all. How about that? I shouldn't be promoting that song. Um... Thing. Let's do evil queen makeup. No, I'm kidding. I can't do eyeliner and talk. You know, Chantal, I have to say, even as a woman, unless you're doing a makeup tutorial like doing a live chat and while you're doing the live chat and there are people in the chat wanting to talk to you, taking a moment to put on your makeup, it's so tacky. This is so tacky and unprofessional. 
This is stuff you should do before the live chat starts. Why do it during your chat? No, no, c'est vraiment impossible. Okay, that's step one. <sighs> Yelling and bathing. What? Oh. <laughs> No offense, I mean, I, I really, I'm not like bad mouthing. I don't like bad mouthing anybody, but, but, <laughs> but, I'm not bad mouthing anybody. But if you're not bad mouthing anybody, there should be no but. There's no but to it. I'm just like I can't listen to that kind of stuff. Well, then don't listen. Candles. Don't watch. Fake candles. Do I have a Muslim circle? No. Hi, Cynthia. Horror movie vibes. We watched Cabin in the Woods last night. Do you guys remember that? That movie? The Muslim weight loss group? Um, I don't know why it has to be Muslim, but <sighs> she's taking way too much time to put her makeup on during a live chat. Just why? When you're doing a live chat, your attention should be on your audience and paying attention to the people that are there to talk to you. Why do all of this crap nonsense while the live chat's going? Hello, guys. Uh -huh. Where's my black eyeliner? Moving on. Still doing her makeup. <laughs> I'm doing my makeup at midnight because it's a live stream and I want to look more alive. Anyways, this guy was doing shots. Like people were daring him to do shots. And his. For someone who doesn't pay much attention to Cobra and. NAL. She's sure talking a lot about it. <laughs> I just turned it on for a couple of minutes, she says, and then she continues to talk about it. Buddies were like egging him on and like egging him on and like somebody sent $21 to do like a huge glass of shots. You know what? Speaking about that, Chantal, if that is what people are doing in his chat, maybe you're forgetting about what you did back at the villa. Do you remember? Because if you don't, I'll remind you because I was there. And unlike you, I was sober. So I do remember. You would take out a bunch of edibles. And you would start popping them like Tic Tacs. One right after the other. You wouldn't even wait 30 minutes, 45 minutes for them to kick in. You would just start popping them like Tic Tacs, just showing off. And then soon they would all catch up with you. And there'd be people in your chat saying, take a few more, take a few more. And you would. So can you really criticize anything going on with Cobra when you were doing the exact same thing back at the villa when you were in the villa? And he was on medication where he's not supposed to drink. And his friends were like, do it, you know. So anyway, he did the shots. And then he started like getting incoherent, like alcohol poisoning. And Sounds a lot like you back at the villa with the edibles. When you were incoherent, his friends were just like, inst like, just like standing there, like poking on his head, putting face, like face paint on him. And then he fell over and hit his head and they were just like laughing and like not even calling the ambulance right away. Anyway, he ended up like going into a coma and then like dying 25 days later. Like that's insane. I'm so glad I don't drink anything anymore. Like, I don't, I don't miss that. <laughs> Legally blonde. What? Remember what I said about the fine print with Chantal? She could say, I don't drink anymore and be telling the truth. But just because she says she's not drinking anymore doesn't mean she's not doing anything else. You know, with Chantal, you have to ask complete questions. You've got to cover all bases. Questions like, Chantal, have you done any chemicals 
at all that would alter you. You had to cover all the bases at once because if you leave one base uncovered, she will take advantage. But Chantal, even if you weren't taking anything you weren't supposed to take, per se, you're still doing the one thing in abundance that you shouldn't be doing, and that's the food. Food is your substance, and you are abusing it. You're overdoing it, you're overindulging, and it's leading to poor health. And you may not tell us all of your health problems. You may lie about some of them. You may downplay some of them, but you're still unhealthy. So even though you left some things behind in Canada, the one thing that you could do, you are doing. And you're getting increasingly more and more sick, and we can see it. They're legally blonde. You know when your mascara is like drying up and sorry if I miss anyone who came in while I'm doing this. Um, and it's like all crusty and barely works. And Chantal likes to do things like put on her makeup to basically run up the meter to make the live longer or to avoid talking to people. She did this back in the villa and she's doing it now. When she really doesn't have anything really to talk about, she tries to eat up time by doing things and deflecting the things that really don't add to the conversation. Who has a silver play button? Me. Actually, there's like a little dent in it. So I'm like, I emailed YouTube and I'm like, can I have a replacement one? <laughs> That says foodie beauty. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> so that way I can have two that in case I change my person, like my my name, my personalities. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> and she's not joking. And I would let it, I would like to let everybody know that when you get a YouTube plaque, you don't get it for free. If it's real, you don't get it for free. You have to pay $80 to get the real plaque. So even if her plaque were real she would have to have to pay for another one. They're not just going to send her one for free. And they're certainly not going to change the name on the plaque. They're issuing the plaque under the name where you got to 100K. They're not going to go, oh, it's you? Oh, we'll just change the name for you because you said so. It don't work like that. Oh, okay, there we go. I can do more Madonna covers, yeah. <clears throat> nope. Don't get started. Don't do it. No. Nope. nope. I love the sound of silence, don't you? I love the fact I can mute her. We're, we're just going to mute through all that singing. <laughs> I love the fact I can silence her. That's a religious song. I probably shouldn't sing that. <laughs> well, it's not really religious. It's So West Coast last said, Chantal, you doing okay? Your mukbang had very sad energy. Yeah, everybody's been remarking about that today. That she seemed off today in her mukbang. Like something was wrong. Something was really pressing on her. Don't know what it is. You know... I remember when Chantal on payday, she would be at her happiest because she would have the most money and she would go wild buying food, but she just got paid today. So today would be her YouTube payday. So she did a mukbang and the mukbang really wasn't that happy. She didn't seem happy in it for some reason. It's sacrilegious because it's Madonna. Do you remember that scene from like, the League of the Rome where they go in confession and the, the priest comes out sweating because Madonna was in the, the thing, the confessional booth. You should have Foodie Beauty is so iconic. <laughs> I'm waiting to see back what they say about my play button because it is dented. And they're like, if it's damaged, you can ask for a replacement. Hey, punk rock. Kate Middleton. Yeah, I saw. 
Yeah, I'm, I'll keep her in my prayers. Hey, Stanley. I don't know Stanley. So see, I went from looking like I've risen from the dead to kind of cute. I, I look, I, I went from looking from dead to, hi, Ava. Hey, teardrop, hi. To, um, really, y'all, Charlotte? Everyday Travonda. My mukbang was more morose. Yeah. I, my, my mood changes like so much. Anyways, I have an appointment with like a mental health group. Mental health group that like helps you um, with like therapy and with like psych psychiatric diagnosis. So I'm just waiting for like an official appointment with a psychiatrist. So when that happens, I will let you guys know. You know, I really hope she means that because she does need to talk to someone. She needs to go to inpatient. She needs to go to therapy. She needs to talk to somebody. But I'm going to be honest. I really don't hold out much hope for Chantal because she could have the best psychotherapist, therapist. She could have a team of people around her wanting to help her. They have all the knowledge in the world. Here's the problem. She doesn't like authority. And she doesn't like restriction. And she doesn't like anybody telling her no. Or them basically trying to straighten her out. She's very defiant. And she's very stubborn. And strong-willed as far as nobody's going to tell her what to do. She's going to look at those people who want to help her as them telling her what to do and putting restrictions on her. And she's not going to follow whatever it is they have to say. And quite honestly, I don't think she's ready for the truth of herself. I don't think she's ready to change her life. I don't think she's ready to change her habits or let go of bad habits. She is too heavily enabled with what she does. She's got too many enablers, uh, too many yes men, too many people backing her up on all of her toxicity. You know, she's got this large group of people that will say yes to whatever she has to say, that will back her up and not call her out on her nonsense. And she likes the praise and, and she likes the coddling. She always has. And so she's not used to having a group of people around her that are not Beezers, that have no connection to her, that don't care about her YouTube channel, that are going to say, here's the truth. Do with it as you will. Truth is something that Foodie will never swallow whole, ever. It's too much. She doesn't have a big enough throat. So in the past, she's talked about talking to a psychiatrist or a therapist, but there are many occasions where she would cancel the appointments or not show up or not return the phone calls. And so she never went in. She's not really interested. I felt like he's going to run screaming. It's going okay, Stanley. How you been? I can combine it into a super black. Yeah. Paul Freed, really? Uh, that happens. Hey, thanks, Teardrop. How are you doing? Got this. Oh. Hi, Victoria. Not Victoria. Yes, I saw that. The guy, yeah. I saw that. That was dark. What happened to that girl on live stream? All for views. Will I go? Not Chantal criticizing other people for what they do for views. When you think about all the things that she's done for the sake of views and attention. Yes. Hi, Vanna. I know, teardrop. I got lucky with this. It is expensive. Like, you know, because, yeah, sometimes, like, especially therapy, like, it's super expensive. But I guess it's, like, what you, I don't know, people say, well, you should prioritize that. But, like, I don't know. Chantal, if you're ordering takeout two and three times a day, 
And if you're doing junk food hauls frequently, surely you can afford therapy. I mean, it's all about priorities. What are your priorities? If something is a high priority, you will deal with it. And if you look at it as a non-priority, you won't deal with it at all. So maybe go without some of the junk food hauls and the takeout and you can afford therapy. And the therapy could actually be more beneficial to you. Just says I have plenty of black. You should fire him, Jenna. Your like a prayer was good, at least your first few months. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I always put the cathedral bathroom reverb on when I sing. You know, bipolar type one. How did you know you're bipolar? Hi, Ghostface. I think I'm manic or something because I go like insane. But if I have medication, I'm more I'm more like, you know, calm. Otherwise, I feel like I'm going insane. It's not a good feeling. Yeah, SUP. Yeah, because I don't have my records. Like, I don't think, like, I want to have a more in-depth diagnosis than just, like, depression, you know? Show them your videos. <laughs> I get kicked out of here. I'm kidding. Shelly, I just use my um, audio recorder. Going into a mental hospital. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. And there's your mama sending a super chat, talking about something that has nothing to do with Chantal's chat at all. Just trying to bring up drama for her to talk about. Oh, really? Teardrop? Yeah, anxiety is no joke. Yo, mama, what do you think about FFG dragging Shannon's husband for being racist? Is there a lot of immigrants in court and does... Oh, like, like, who's B.O.? <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, yo mama. You just want to want talking points on the drama, don't you? I don't know. I don't really have, like, an opinion. Like, okay, no, I have to say... I don't care about those people whatsoever, so I just ignore, but um, I did see what her husband wrote, and I'm like, 100% of that, like, say racist things like that against other, uh, they're just, they have no brains, they have no brains, I don't know, don't forget the bomb making, oh yeah, bomb, oh yeah, so yeah, probably, yeah, so disgusting, it's, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, basically, if you watch your wife um, grind on another guy and kiss him. Yeah, Ava. <laughs> exactly. You know, it sounds like she wanted to talk about something related to Shannon, but she didn't want to bring it up. So maybe she talked to Yo Mama and Yo Mama sent a super chat just to give her a way to talk about it without making it seem like she's bringing it up first. That's the way I'm taking this. But even more racist towards First Nation people, there's a serial killer that targets them in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Oh, probably, Brenda. Immigrants do not get everything handed to them coming into Canada. Yeah, if you're mad at immigrants taking your doors, Probably because you're not qualified, you bum. Now that was interesting. That part right there. Why is it interesting? Because when she was around Natter, that was something that Natter said a lot. He used the term bum. He called everybody a bum. Get a job, you bum. That's how Natter talked. Chantal tends to mimic what she hears and who she's around so isn't it interesting that even though she says she can't stand natter she hates him with the fire of a thousand suns this man that did her so much harm she still talks about him to this day and not only does she not only talk about him but she's using some of the terminology that he uses even now. 
which kind of points in the direction that perhaps on the phone that they are still talking. You're talking like Natter, Chantal. Should you be talking like him? This person that you swore did you so much physical harm? I'm going to bring this up yet again. If you've had someone in your life who has been hurtful to you, caused a great deal of harm to you, you don't want to think about them. You don't want to talk about them. You don't want to bring them up. And you certainly wouldn't mimic the way that they talked because that would, I would believe, bring up bad memories of that person. Yet here you are sounding a lot like him right at this very minute. Well, I'm sorry, I have trouble holding my tongue. <laughs> That's why you said the super chat, your mama, isn't it? <clears throat> Come here and say all those things. Come here and say all those things to a, a Middle Eastern person. I dare you. You don't have the balls. You don't. It's Ramadan. Let's behave. Okay. Yes. Let's behave. <laughs> Apparently, it doesn't work too. The blue pill. Yeah, it's back here. I'm covering. If I were them, I would just stay offline, but it's none of my business. <clears throat> you like misbehaving? More tasty restaurants for the immigrants. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I don't like about Cornwall. It's too white. <laughs> you know, actually the best restaurants in Cornwall are from non-white people. They're from Greek people. Philo's. Greek owners, Louis Pizzeria, little cute Greek man. <laughs> he's so short, but he's so nice. Um, Greek man, King George, Greek restaurant. There you go. Yeah, I have some candles from fake ones. Crime scene investigative pillow edition and head detective. You should be thanking me. You should be thanking me for paying your bills and. Hold on. Wait a minute. What? Hold on a minute. Like that, but... I don't know. I have to think about a teardrop. <laughs> but you're right. It is. <clears throat> Brazy, please focus your time on your child and not for the baby. She can do nothing for you in life. And that's just you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on with Chantal's microphone, but sometimes she's entirely too loud. And sometimes she's got the microphone too close to her mouth. And then there are other moments like this where you can barely hear her. What's going on with that, Chantal? Why is it tonight during this live stream, you're like, you're talking really, really softly. What is going on with that? Girl, turn up the volume. Yeah, really. This loser makes fun of me every time I go live, okay? You should be thanking me. You should be thanking me for paying your bills and affording you to take care of your child and take them to Disneyland with my content. You're welcome, Jay Leno. Who is she talking to? Chantal's under this delusion that she pays all of our bills. If that's the case, where's the rest of my money? <laughs> YouTube don't pay that much. Who do you think you are? The audacity of you thinking you pay all of our bills and without you, we would all fall. No, Chantal, without Girl World, you would fall because who would find out about your content? Who? Who'd want to stay interested in your content? We make your content interesting. And trust me, it's not easy. You don't make it easy these days. You're not an interesting person. The ego on you. And the crazy thing is, there's no reason for you to have an ego as big as it is. What is there to you that would give you a gigantic ego? Girl, so what? You got 100K big deal. There are channels on YouTube that are a million 
subscribers, a million or two million or three million, they don't talk like you. They don't even act like you. They don't run around strutting and saying, I pay people's bills. Girl, stop. It, you, you got nothing to brag about. You got a 100K channel and your paychecks suck. Let's move it along. Shannon talks so much trash about your supposed financial support of Salah. Yes, she's been supporting her husband this whole time from Blockercy. Thank you, Yo Mama. You're right. Yes. But this is it, Yo Mama. They're all hypocrites. We've been saying this. And it just keeps coming out and coming out. Yes. Yes. Okay. Like, happy birthday, SCP. Listen. I, the things I could tell you about their relationship, I'm not going to lower myself to that level, but they have some nerve. Yes, they have some nerve. You know, she's dying to go back to Canada and talk trash. Oh, it's just eating her up inside to keep her mouth shut. It really is. Because Chantal loves to be angry. And she loves to rage. And she loves the drama. There's nothing she likes more than being in a place and having complete freedom where she can be feral and she can be mean and she can be nasty and nobody tell her what to do. The fact that she's got to keep her lips closed, it's just, you know, all of that negativity is just bubbling up inside. It's going to come out eventually. Like you're going to talk about my husband, what he did. He didn't even cheat in real life. You Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is where I'm going to correct you, Chantal. This is where I'd like to correct you. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. You're fake married. I've been real married. Twice. Twice. Like real marriages with a real ring and a real husband. Yeah, that. So as a person who's been really married looking at you with your fake, phony, paid-for contract marriage. Let me educate you on a few things. Not that you can be educated because you're not open-minded enough to learn from people, but I'll give it a shot. So, if you're in a real relationship and you've got a man that you're with, even on a boyfriend level, if he's talking to other women the way that he was talking to Kai Bella, He's talking all that nasty R-rated talk, talking about fetishes and what he wants to do to her and what she will do to him and making plans to bring her out to Kuwait. Because he wanted to make plans for real to bring her out there. That's enough. You're just trying to justify in your head as, oh, it didn't really happen. She wasn't really physically here. It don't matter. The plans were in place to bring her there. And the only reason why she didn't go there is because, A, she really wasn't interested in Salah, first of all. She was just trolling him. B, because she said, I don't have the money. But if she had had money and was really interested in Salah, she would have been brought all the way out there. It would have really gone down. But let's just take Kai Bella out of the equation for a minute. What about the other women that he has played with in Kuwait? How about the lady in the red room? Remember the red room picture? That really went down. He was really in a bed with a real woman and she was naked. There was more to that red room picture. It was just cropped out to protect the woman in question and protect her identity. But that really did happen. So explain that. That really happened. You're going to forgive that too? I guess you will. But any woman worth her weight in salt would not put up with that. Would not put up with a man who's on the phone with another woman saying the things that he was saying to her. It would have been bye-bye time. But you're so desperate, you're going to hang on to your fake, phony husband when he's made it very clear he is not interested in in you at all for any reason no matter how much money you got he's not interested then he's not interested now 
but you're so desperate for a caretaker slash companion, you'll hang on to him anyway. So have fun with the scat man, you know, and it's appropriate that your life is a pile of crap. So a scat man just fits right into the equation, doesn't it? Cheated on your husband at least two times that I can count with Andre. What about Andre? Yeah. So can it? You had a whole ass affair. You kicked your husband out. Like, You're talking like you know her business. You don't know anything. Be quiet. Anyway. Some guy she was on with. I already talked about this a while ago. Like, whatever. She's talking all this mad trash about Shannon. Because she's not in Canada, where Shannon is. See, Chantal is a coward. She's talking all this mad trash in Kuwait because she's far enough away from Shannon that nothing would ever happen. This is the only place where she feels courageous is online. Where nobody's in front of her to say something or do something. Hey, I'm just giving it right back to her. She talks about my relationship, so. So it's a revenge thing. It's a complete revenge thing because Shannon has the things to say about your relationship. This is your get back gotcha moment. And it's really not a gotcha moment. This is pathetic, Chantal. But pathetic is what you are. So it fits. For six hours on her anniversary. And I never said anything about that. I never, I never talk back to these people compared to what they say about me. <sighs> Lord, God, give me strength. <laughs> yeah, that's easier said than done, Robin. You try being in my shoes and having these moron hypocrites come after you in every way. They are horrible, illegally blonde. Hi, Rose. Wife swap? No, I would never do it. I have seen it yet. You know what kind of person she is, Chantel? We all know someone like that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But I've been friends with this person for like years. And like, because of that, I don't like to talk about her like online that much, you know, but like the things she said about me and <clears throat> my situations have been disgusting and like just making up things about the past. I don't know. Just stupid. So yeah. She has nothing interesting. Yeah, I know. He nearly hit someone else's wife over. Why are you whispering? What for? Oh, yeah, I saw that one, Talia. <laughs> like, like, full out almost DV moment. So, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. W wife swap is like, I don't know, it's so weird. So I can time out Valley for 300 seconds. <laughs> Why? So Lena says cheating in real life or over the internet is still cheating. Betrayal hurts, but it takes strength to heal and forgive. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not strong that way. Betrayal is betrayal and cheating is cheating. And if somebody betrays me or cheats on me, we're done. Because how can you forgive somebody for cheating or betraying you? Once those two things happen... The trust is gone. How do you get it back? How do you get it back? <laughs> you can't. You know, as far as cheating is concerned, can I just say this? There are a million seconds between the time that one person meets another person and the moment where the dirty thing happens, right? They take down their pants. They, they pull up their skirt. And it only takes half a second to say, no, I'm not doing this. So if you're with somebody and they don't take that half a second to say, no, I shouldn't do this. I love this person. Then you're not a high priority and it's time to go. Likewise, if they betray you, they betray your trust. They lie to you. That's, that's unforgivable too. But I guess Chantal doesn't see it that way. Maybe because she herself is a cheater. She's cheated on two men in her life. 
And even to this day, she is afraid of somebody doing to her what she has done to others. She's always running from the consequences of her actions and her own karma. Well, you can run all you want, Chantal. Wherever you go, karma will always find you. And you got to settle up the debt sometime. I don't even see her here. There's one creator who stalks her. Who? Me? You can forget, but you don't need to forget. Yeah. Well, the Christian crazy one. Yeah, the crazy lady. I'm very, yeah, I, I'm jealous too. I used to be a lot more jealous. But yeah, I am too, Sheree. Oh, I'm so. I think Chantal is still jealous. It's just that she's in a place where there are no other options. There are no other men to replace Salah as far as being a companion and being a caretaker and going to get the food. She has no other place to run. Like if she left Kuwait and if she went back to Canada, where would she go? Her family's not going to take her in. They're not going to set her up with room and board and give her a room to sleep in and to stay in. Oh no, they're not that crazy. They know she's a lunatic, lollipop, triple dipped and psycho. They're not going to deal with that. They're just not. They're not going to deal with all her nonsense. Have her live streaming all over the house and, and streaming all over the place and, and having unwanted attention at the residence. They're not going to sign up for that. I think they put their foot down after the whole thing with Music Biz Marty and the car almost being towed. I think that was the final line, honestly. The final line. They're like, no more of this. She brings a whole lot of trouble and a whole lot of drama and we don't want it or need it or have to put up with it. So they're not going to put up with it at all so where would she go are there any other men in waiting for chantal no absolutely not you know she, salah is the last one because she she doesn't have the money anymore to financially seduce a man into being with her or hanging out with her or putting up with her she doesn't have the money anymore she's got a host of health problems she has trouble breathing. She has trouble moving. Anybody would look at her and go, no, thank you. Too much to handle, too much to take on. So she has to stick with Salah. So even if Salah has a million women on his phone that he's talking to, she's going to ignore it. She has to ignore it. Because what else is there? <laughs> Whatever. All I'm saying is her relationship is far from perfect. She has no business coming from mine. They have to they're turning into little cows themselves. They call you up for the same things they do. They always did, yeah. They always did. I was like, anyway, whatever. French. Once you destroy the trust, it's done. Yep. Yeah. I get that. I get that. I get that not many people. Some people do move on. Some people don't. Yeah. It's called having standards and not settling for less than you deserve. It's called knowing what makes you happy and what's going to make you miserable. And if you're with somebody and they cheat on you. They lie to you. They betray you. You can choose to either put up with it or not. But if you put up with it, you're signing up for a whole lot of misery, a whole nother set of problems. Because if somebody betrays you, then in the back of your mind, you're always wondering, are they lying to me again? You're looking for the lies. You're looking for the betrayal. The trust is gone. So why 
continue with something that's, that's forever broken. Um, you know, but how I deal with it, I just don't talk about it publicly. There's no way you can do that and still make your relationship work. So maybe Gal is in the water box. We have a box of Aquafina and she is in it sleeping. The name, the, um, just like a box in the middle of the floor and I can't move it now because the minute it got fell on the ground I took like I took all the water out and then kind of just like tossed it on the ground I guess not fell she went inside right away am I done with twitch oh, no I'm done with everything right now Aquafina's made by Pepsi where Pepsi Cola. Oops. Oh, that's bad. Let's take the label off. <laughs> it was on sale. I don't know. I didn't notice. Eh. I guess uh, now I know. <sighs> yeah, we definitely have some products that I'm sure. Next. You're making hummus, Shelby. Good luck. You know, Chantal, you're you're on you're on a streak today. Your mukbang sucked, and the live stream is sucking. <laughs> just two in a row. Like you, you're just going for broke that way, aren't you? Homemade hummus is really good. I don't care to hear about the food. Next. You know what I mean? They just like highlight the rich and famous people only. They don't care about peasants. They always say I'm going to jail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call the Saudi prince on her and have her put away for good. You know, I have a tip for you all who are so vehemently hate hateful towards me. Don't watch me. Like, literally, live your life, man. Live your life. Cauliflower rice is okay, but it's not rice. It's like being at home, bachelor smell in your bedroom there, garlic. I'm not being nice during Ramadan, I know. I can't help it. She so wants to talk about everybody else. Look at her. She just keeps bringing up different people. She so wants to go off about everybody. These people are annoying. Well, I want to show you guys the new the new air fresheners. Next. I get an Airbnb for his catfish. <laughs> Fake girlfriends. Uh, yeah, I know. And he he's like one of the people who says that I have no content. Like, excuse me. Well, truth hurts, doesn't it? Everybody's been saying that, Chantal. Not just one person. Everybody's been saying it. Your content is boring. I mean, you did set the bar for what to expect from you for over a year. Like all the high drama and toxicity and just the shenanigans. You set the bar and then you lowered the bar a lot. <laughs> You went from doing all of that, you were way up here with the toxicity to it dropped down to nothing because you went to a place where you could not be dramatic and highly toxic and, and all of that. You dropped down to nothing and you run out of content ideas and you chose a partner in crime that he doesn't want to work with you anymore. So you're basically flying solo and you don't know what to do. So yeah, it's boring. Your content is my content. So I hate to tell you, <laughs> just leeches, I know. They got married and Sam is still on Twitter raging about Belinda and Al. 
Les incompetent. No. Okay, let's be positive, I guess. You see that? She's like, let's be positive, I guess. She doesn't want to be positive. She so does not want to be positive. And I can't help but think about something that happened to her in Cuba. When she went to Cuba, the people that were on her channel that were just so oversaturated, so shell-shocked by all of the high drama and all this stuff with Natter, when she talked about going to Cuba and then she went to Cuba, all of her subs breathed for just a moment, like a big sigh of relief. Like they were finally going to get a break from her talking about Natter all the time and fighting with him and being in a different environment, someplace positive where positive energy might show up. They all just took a deep breath and then they had to quickly exhale it out because the negativity just started right back up again. Because while she was in Cuba, she did not shut up about Natter. So people were encouraging her with positive words and, and encouraging her to go out and explore things. She didn't do it. She, even in Cuba, different environment, surrounded by the beauty of the beach and the sand and, and the, the environment, she did not want to be positive. She doesn't like positive energy. She doesn't like positive attention. She loves to be negative. I say Barracuda Ricotta all the time because of you. Barracuda and warm Ricotta. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. Why do birds suck? Oh, no, no, we're not doing that. She was starting to sing a Carpenter song, The Carpenters. <sighs> I'm not having it. I, for some reason, I'm blanking on the name of, of the singer for the Carpenters, the woman. Oh, my God, that's bothering me. I had to put my microphone down because it's really bothering me. Let me just look that up. I'm sorry. That, that's I'm bothered by that because I, gr I grew up in the 70s. Karen Carpenter. Thank you. Karen Carpenter. I grew up in the 70s. AM radio. Listening to the Carpenters. And Karen Carpenter, she has the most lovely, mellow, perfect golden voice. I mean, just you hear her voice and it automatically just, it will soothe your soul. That beautiful, warm, honey-like resonance that just vibrates through you and here she is singing a carpenter song do not disrespect miss karen carpenter chantal or the carpenters in general i refuse to let that happen no no i'm going to keep you on mute so you can go ahead and sing but we're not going to hear you no no we're not doing it She's still singing. Go ahead and sing. We don't have to hear you. And she's singing one of my more favorite Carpenter songs, Close to You. I've got a few of them, but I'm not going to let her do that to me. Forty lashes for the heretic. <laughs> for every verse of that Madonna song. Hi, kitty. I started singing in my cap in my room. <laughs> That's old. I know. Leave my music alone from now on, Chantal. 70s, 80s music, you're not allowed to disrespect them anymore. If you dare to sing any more 70s or 80s songs, I'm going to find where you are and I'm going to blast Dreamweaver through your window. For 24 hours straight. 
creepy if I ever do go to Canada for Halloween. We have to do a collab. But if I see a ghost, you have to call me down. Hey, that's not playing. I don't get the blast. I can't lose you, babe. No. <laughs> I love the fact I just turned the volume all the way down. I don't have to hear her. Nope. Denied. Amanda's trying to not be Islamophobic peak comedy. Yeah. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. <laughs> Wart's worth. Yeah. Why do you keep showing your... I don't know if that's a wart. Why do you keep showing that to us, Chantal? Get that treated. You. I don't want to see her warts. If he gets, like, if he doesn't get his salad or whatever right away in the morning, like if I sleep in, or if I sleep during the time when I normally give him something, he gets mad and throws his whole dish. <laughs> I have to film it. Hi, Bundy Burso. You know, if she keeps continuing to be boring, I'll just cut this off. Nothing. You know? Like, I'm not capable of having one slice of pizza. Like, there's no way. Like, for me, it's, like, not worth it. It's, I can't explain it. It's, like, weird. We're Stone Temple Pilots this summer. Wait. The, but the singer is gone. How's that going to happen? Thank you, uh, Pixie. Pixel Pixie. I never heard of Sibba. Yeah, probably Stanley, you're right. <laughs> I'm so grossed out. Fuck. Sorry. What is she doing? <laughs> Anyways, I want a snack. What time is it? Oh, God. you going to start eating what? again? Oh, I should order, order so whore. But I already ordered today. Mm. Scott Whaling. I didn't find him attractive, but I, I liked his singing, yeah. So she had takeout earlier today, and I guess that was the mukbang that she posted that I'm not reacting to. And it's late at night. She wants to order again. Like that person said on Twitter, you can't heal in the same environment that you hurt in. <laughs> Certainly that's true with you, Chantal. You being in Kuwait in that room and you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything, is not doing you any favors. Because all you want to do is eat to distract yourself and it's not working. I liked that band. Yeah. I never order because I'm hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was important. I never order because I'm hungry. So when she sits down and she does a mukbang, she's not doing it because she's hungry, which points in the direction that she's eating before she gets the takeout. She's just eating to eat. Like uh, I order because it's like a comfort food. Yeah, because you got a problem with food. So should you be on YouTube monetizing your issue? Should anybody in your chat be encouraging this by talking about food with you and you talking about food with them? You come to your audience and say, I'm going to get myself right. I'm going to get myself healthy. And yet you say those things, but you don't stand on your business. You talk about it, but you don't do it. Likewise, there are some people in your audience, they say, I care about you, but they don't stand on their business because they say they care, but then knowing you have an issue with food, they mention food to you. And I'll say it with my whole chest right here, right now. And this applies to anybody out there, not just Chantal. If you are someone and you know someone who's got an issue 
with something. They've got an addiction or an obsession with something. And it's raging and it's active. Mentioning that thing to that person, putting it in conversation is messed up. Because you might be potentially triggering that person to have an episode where they go nuts with that thing. To just have a B moment of one sort or another. So if you care about that person, why would you want that to happen? Why would you put that in play? Granted the person in question, it is their responsibility to take care of it, to look at it, to examine it, to get it treated. But still, if you have full knowledge that something isn't right with that person, that they're not well, why provoke them to be more unwell? Why keep that whole toxic cycle going? Why be part of that? So Chantal, if you care about your health, then you'll commit to your health. And if you don't want to commit to your health, then you won't. And the people in your chat, if they care about you, then they need to stand on their business and not talk about food with you, even if you bring it up. So, Thank you, Matt. Nice, Grandma G. Salah's doing well. He's sleeping right now. That's just 15 weirdos that still watch him obsessively. The last time I did, those crazy still wear those wigs. Strike people every time. She said she's getting a new laptop. You should tell her you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, really. The audacity to, for her to treat me that way when I pay her bills, like kiss my butt. Oh, Lord. This again? Oh, sorry. I need a swear jar. Hello, Kevin. Oh, no, Melly, you have handsome man in your head. Handsome man. Where? Okay, good night, Nats. Thanks for being here. You know... Is something ever happened between Chantal and Salah? <laughs> the words that she's saying about certain reactors, about I'm paying their bills, she would say the same thing about Salah. I did so much for him and I paid for everything and I was the one paying the rent and I was giving him money for the rent and I bought him this and I bought him that. Like She uses the fact that she pays for things as leverage over other people's heads. She uses the fact that she pays for things as, 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 as a weapon to beat on somebody. I did all this for you and you should be more grateful and you owe me and I own you. That is so Chantal. Narcissists never do things for free, ever, ever. If they do something for you, even something small, they will never let you forget. It's better to... If you take something from them, you pay them back immediately. That way they have nothing to say. Because if you don't, they'll bring it up. And they won't stop bringing it up. They'll forever bring it up in conversation if they get mad at you. So just imagine what would happen if her and Salah broke apart for whatever reason. Or if she came home to Canada and she couldn't return back to Kuwait. Which is probably what Salah is hoping for at some point. That she's going to get kicked out of Kuwait. Her visa is going to get denied for re-entry. And then he's free of her without her potentially being angry at him and taking her wrath out on him. He's probably crossing his fingers every single time her visa comes up. He's probably praying and hoping that they will not renew it. That way he can be finally be free of her. But you know what, Salah, even if physically she's not there, it's too late. You two are forever linked online. And that's your fault, sir, because you chose to get involved with her. You got greedy and you got lazy, and now you got to pay the price. I love jalapeno and pizza. Actually, I like, I like all those more. Karen McHill. Funny pack of indomie. Um, soda. 
Hot Cheetos. What else? No, not on mayonnaise. Yeah, pistachios on salad. No, that sounds good though. See what I mean? People are bringing up all these different things in chat. And she's like, oh, that sounds good. People in her own chat triggering her. Williams. Never give up on the cheese. French Thousand Island. Yeah, no, French is really good. It's like orange. Pita chips. Yes. She's getting so excited just talking about food. Oh, look at all these foods that people are suggesting to me. I got to do another junk food haul. She's going to go straight to the kitchen and raid the pantry after this live. I promise you. They getting her all fired up to eat. Festivals. Well, the best thing about festivals is the food. Then you're not doing festivals right. If that's all you look forward to at a festival, you ain't doing it right. Brent, oh my gosh, but um, it's not making me hungry anymore. See? Don't look at ground beef when you're eating it. I use, I have leftover ground chicken and a meatloaf. And she leaves and comes back. They can be both teardrop. Sham pops you out of the hut. Of course she is. And what happens? So people in her chat are talking about food with her. What I say? That that would trigger her to eat. Guess what? She's eating right now. She went to the kitchen and got some grape leaves. And there it is, folks. That's why you cannot go to a food addict and talk about food with them. You can't mention it. You can't talk about it in conversation, especially when the addiction is going on, because this is what happens. You can't be in an environment and around people that enable you. You can't have a YouTube channel where your problem is being monetized. And that's your fault, YouTube, by the way. I blame this on you because you could you could stop this. You got rules, don't you? Why aren't you reinforcing them? Why not? But people in her own chat talking about food. She ran to the kitchen. She didn't even wait until the live was over. Had to get the great leaves. Had to. And you know what? I don't want to see her eat. So we're not going to go any further. There's like another 15 minutes or so left. We're done here. We're really done. She's starting to feed her face. I'm not down for that. So we'll just end the react here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this react. If you have, please like it, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.